Now Paul had some type of thorn in the flesh. We don't know what it was, but it made life difficult for him. And so he pleaded to the Lord three times, take this from me, take this from me, take this from me. The Lord seemed to be harsh because he said, no, I will not remove that throne, that thorn from you. He then promised Paul something of greater importance. He gave Paul that beautiful assurance my, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul had the assurance that God would constantly be there surrounding him, lifting and sustaining him. God's grace can be defined as his undeserved love that is found in Christ Jesus our Lord. We go back and remember how God had created this perfect paradise, this perfect kingdom. And then Adam and Eve rebelled against them. They brought sin into the world and with sin came death and despair and all kinds of problems. With that though, God made a promise. He promised one who would save mankind, and in the fullness of time, he sent his son. His son to pay the price demanded for our sins, to rise victorious over death and all of our enemies. And he frees us from sin, from despair, from hopelessness. He did it for us on the cross, a cross that we deserve no matter who we are. And now he comes to give us life. A full life for here, in the midst of all the challenges we face, but a full life as well for eternity. And God's grace is filled with riches and many blessings. And too often we take those blessings for granted, we overlook them because it may be crowded by pain and suffering and the challenges that we face in life itself. But God's grace includes His pardon. It includes His peace, support, deliverance, comfort, strength, assurance, joy, and hope, and every gift that is good. Paul was given the assurance that God's continued grace would be mightier than the thorns that he faced the challenges that were set before him. And God's grace means that we have peace. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give the world as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This peace again rests upon our Lord and Savior. It's a peace that is, comes from his presence in our hearts. The peace is an inner contentment knowing who we are who will become through faith in Jesus Christ. Surrounded by God's grace and having an inner peace, we are free to live. To live as God's grace gives us life now and throughout eternity. Today, many may challenge the truth of God's grace, God's grace in Todd Ross's life, especially in those early hours of Wednesday morning. We may challenge the reality of that fact, but it does not take it away. God's grace is there. God's grace was there with Todd early Wednesday morning. He felt his pain, his suffering, because of what his tongue went through on the cross, the agony and the despair. We dare not deny that God's grace was with him in life and surrounded him in death and frees him now from the chains of this world for life in heaven. Let us consider how God's grace surrounded Todd throughout his life on this side of eternity. God was moved by his grace to create a unique and special being, an individual. He gave him a heart of gold and a wild sense of humor to brighten the day. There was a radiant smile, a compassionate heart, a determination for excellence, a love for family, a love for friends. He would place in his eye a sparkle, strong with gentle hands to provide for his family. A zest for life, a mischievous spirit, and a devotion to kids. And Todd Ross, or Rossi, saw the light of day and would brighten this side of eternity for 50 short years. God's grace would reach down and touch Todd's heart through the waters of baptism, 
she became a child of God. And here, he, and then he would profess his faith through the rite of confirmation. He received communion here only a couple of months ago. Kinsey's graduation ceremony. He had a simple faith. A simple faith that was seen in deeds more than words. While we may not, while we may stray and the darkness of the world may surround us, God's grace is always there. He promises, I'll never leave you, nor abandon you. His grace is there throughout life. And as we face death, if we will open our eyes in the midst of the darkness that surrounds us. Now Todd could also be a very mischievous individual. The TV ad goes, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. And perhaps there are those who said, what happens in Carroll in the 80s stays in Carroll in the 80s as well. Until today. Now, there are many stories about Todd. For example, there, well, maybe I can't use that one because I, we were in church, right? <laughs> oh, there's a good one. That's a little risque. Better leave that one where it is. Back in Carroll. Uh, but there's one. We, maybe we can say this one, share this one. It was a couple days before graduation. And uh, down there at Carroll High, there was about three or four boys that were up on the third floor. They looked down and they saw some other students down there on the ground. And all of a sudden, miraculously, a fire extinguisher jumps into their hands. <laughs> and then, it accidentally sprays on all those students down below. Now, the administration was not very happy about that fact. They threatened to hold up their graduation. But Todd would be a wonderful lawyer, if not a politician. He wouldn't talk to them, and he talked them out of it so that he could be, that they could be graduated a couple of days down the road. And so Todd was also blessed with a loving and caring family. Becky, you were blessed with 33 years of marriage. Uh, you were complimented each other in a wonderful way. You were the ones who, the one who was well organized and let's say that Todd had a unique way of organizing things. His planning skills may have lacked a little something along the way. For example, Todd would take Brady out for his first driving lessons. Everything was planned perfectly. They were driving down the road and then they got back and on the way back they ran out of gas two blocks from the house. <laughs> They ended up pushing the car the other two blocks. Many gas stories about what took place along the way. And he was proud of his children, who they were as individuals. Now of your individual accomplishments. Three boys, and above all, a princess as well. And he lives on in your hearts, in your memories, and through you. For death cannot destroy that fact. And we dare not let it. Years ago, there was a TV series called The Twilight Zone, which I enjoyed, and that dates me very much, where strange things would happen. And so it was with Todd, I believe it was Miranda. They were out there driving on the road, a gravel road, and all of a sudden, there on the horizon were blinking red lights. Todd concluded that it was a UFO. He got out of the car, stood in the middle of the road, lights off the car, waiting to see what would happen. Choice! Nothing ever happened. But I thought it was a UFO. And the family would keep secrets from Becky and even from Judy. Todd would say, man, let's go get a soda and go fishing. Well, they side a little bit because Todd would teach Miranda how to drive on gravel roads and Judy never figured out where she learned to drive so well. He loved coaching teams for all of his kids. He was very competitive and he always wanted to win. Of course, at times his blood pressure would come to a boiling point and there were times when they made outstanding plays. They would hear the word, mad force. I'm 
time and time again. He had another saying, another saying that was to motivate the kids as they went out to the field. He would send them out onto the field and he would cry, Oh my. Kick! But I can't add the other word that was part of that saying as he sent them out. I'd like to have all those young people that either coached or affected your lives, that you would please rise so we can see the effect that God had in your lives. We'll let you stand because the sermon's been a little long now. Come on, stand up. You can see the lives that he touched. He would like you to go on and to live a successful life. And he'll still be there, cheering you on. Achieve excellence. I'm proud of you. Thank you. You can see it. So Todd touched many lives. In the obituary it was online, 35,000 hits on Facebook. That's a pretty mad choice, isn't it? How he touched lives was evident by the tears that were shed last night. Especially the tears of the ladies who worked at the gas stations that he frequented every day with Wilson. The sad fact is, Todd failed to realize the lives that he touched and the impact that he had in so many lives. Those who have been here to share him, to share him, he would have touched out for each of you. You would have touched out to help him if he would have only opened up. His life was cut short and you and his family and our community was robbed of what might have been. Today, we, however, we rejoice and thank God for the grace and blessings he delivered or bestowed upon God in his life. And we thank God for his grace and the blessings of 50 years of life. We rejoice. And we celebrate life, not death. Wednesday morning, the Lord looked down with sadness in his heart, and Todd drove to a quiet spot. The Lord said to his son, don't, don't. But Todd did. I talked with Coach Ferris last night and asked him what he would say. Not what you can say. He did say this. He said, we will never know why someone did, did something like that, let alone Todd Ross. Let's say we are there for each other. Not be afraid to ask for help. We must step back in time before the darkness closed in. Look in his heart. A faith clouded by circumstances of life, we remember God's grace. And God's grace means that through a simple faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we have the assurance of eternal life. God alone can look into our hearts, the hearts of every individual. All we can see say is that we must trust His grace and we commit God into the hands of loving and compassionate and merciful God by grace through faith in Christ. He stands before the Lord where there's no more pain or suffering or their joys forevermore. But in the midst of this tragedy, what can we say to you, Todd's family, his friends, and our community? Perhaps we must begin by saying to anyone who feels that their life is closing in on them, anyone overwhelmed by pain and suffering and hurt, to anyone who wonders about their worth and their value to people around them, we, and we can say to them, fight back. Share the hurt, the pain with a friend, a fellow worker, a teacher, a pastor. Share the hurt, lift that hurt from you. Because your life is too precious, too valuable, and there are too many dreams to be fulfilled in the future. remember that. And remember God's grace. And 
how important you are to him and to one another. No one is an island. Touch many lives. You're touched by many lives who care for you. The kids and parents alike, the following words are written by one of his children. All I ask is that you love those close to you and never take them for granted. Take time every day to count not only your ambitions, but your blessings as well. Also, we might add, never take for granted life and the friendships that you have. And to this community, friends and family, continue to be a compassionate people, reaching out to one another with love and mercy, recognizing the value and the dignity of every individual, no matter what their social status may be. Strive to recognize those who are hurting those who are trying to hide the hurt and be there to offer encouragement and hope and assurance that they are not alone, that there is indeed hope. To God's children, don't put your dreams on hold. Remember, Todd deals with you. He wants you to fulfill your dreams. He's in your heart and in your very being. Strive to achieve all that is possible and never give up and your very best at all times reach for your dreams and Becky the day the head will be trying at times difficult we cannot deny that the anger will recede and you will cherish the memories that you had for all these years remember them you have a loving family who will support you you have been caring friends to be there for you in a compassionate community to encourage you. The darkness of the night will end and there will be a dawn of a new day. God grant it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. But there is one other thing I'm a little reluctant to do. Something I've never done from the pulpit before. I'll never do it again, I guarantee you that. As you see, I'm a Badger fan. And don't laugh at that fact. And there are two words that for me are very difficult to say. Good. cyclone fans. Now you may have to cross your fingers, put them behind your back, cross your toes, and cross your legs. But I want you to say them with me. Bring the raptors down. Ready? Go! Except when you play the badgers. We continue with the uh, next gym that is printed out for us in the